What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Catching Up with Toronto Ultra presented by TD. Today we're gonna be learning a little bit more about myself and no better way than going out into sunny Toronto and exploring the city while doing so. I first discovered Call of Duty Competitive in Ghosts. Once I was done with Clan Wars with my friends, I figured, hey, how do I get better? What can I play that's more competitive than this? Because I was already dominating Clan Wars. If anyone knows, I was like the Red Clan, the, the guys that controlled everything. So I took it up on game battles and wagers, and that's where I was able to finally play against some pros, lose to a lot of them, beat some, not the good pros though, just the, the average pros at first. Then that led into AW where I was able to finally kind of cement myself as an AM player and you know, get more chances against the big guys. I started in Ghosts and my first year of LAN was in AW. I, in between there, I played a lot of online tournaments and I played against people like JCap, Replays, the old Denial World Championship team, uh, a bunch of veteran players that are now still playing or retired, but more of the story is my first year competing, I was playing against the best of the best. And whether I was winning, losing, I was taking away something from those matches. And that was that I could be professional myself one day. I got humbled really quick towards the end of AW getting top 12 and top six. But at the time I was only 14, 15 and this is like a $2,500 paycheck. I'm feeling on top of the world. I'm feeling like there's no way I shouldn't be able to compete next year and be on a good team. Little did I know, there was an age limit coming in and I wasn't gonna be able to compete. At the time I was 14, 15 and now you had to be 18 to play. So unfortunate for me, but uh, a good end to my underage career, as I'd say. Growing up in the COD scene, I had many challenges that I faced. One of the biggest ones was an inflated ego. After my AW placements of top 12 and top six, I know not the best of some, but a $2,500 paycheck when I was 15, it was, it was pretty good. So my ego was inflated. At the time, I had teamed with Kenny, Spacely Assault, some great players uh, back in the day. And now, the season was over and my ego was massively inflated. And that really caused me to burn a lot of friendships and burn many bridges that ultimately ended up hurting the rest of my career. After AW came Black Ops 3. And in Black Ops 3, I made some really bad choices. One of those was keyboarding. And it's not the best thing to talk about, but it's part of the journey. And that's what ultimately got me here. So in Black Ops 3, there's a thing called keyboarding. You basically use a keyboard, but you have aim assist like a controller. And I was at an advantage playing everyone. So I took that advantage and used it. Basically, I won a lot of money because I keyboarded and people weren't happy. One of my most early significant moments in my career is in Black Ops 4 when I got two back-to-back -back second places. Some of you may think, second place, that's not good. And yeah, I'd agree with you. I don't want to get second place either. But it's part of the process to becoming a champion. And when I got second, I knew that I was where I needed to be. I was in a grand finals against the best players in the world. This time, I didn't execute, but I knew in times to come, I'd revisit my game, relearn what I need to do, and come out on top sooner than later. Handling pressure in high stakes moments is different for everyone. And for me, it's really simple. I just go back to the tendencies that I work on every day. I'm a firm believer that, you know, you how you practice, how you play, and that's what I'm working on every single day in the practice room is just trying to perfect my game to a consistent play style where I know in these moments I can fall back on good tendencies and ultimately, hopefully make the best decision possible in these big moments. Some random things you might not know about me is one, strawberries are my favorite food. And I know, strawberries, weird one, right? Well, you gotta think about it. Strawberry cheesecake, strawberry daiquiri, strawberry margaritas, strawberry shortcake, anything strawberry, strawberry smoothies. My favorite color, it's blue. Pretty basic, but blue. And then, favorite movie, Star Wars. Big Star Wars fan. Uh, better than Harry Potter, better than Star Trek. And argue with me all you want, Star Wars is better. Not a lot of people know, but I grew up just a little outside of Chicago in a town called Aurora. Since then, I've moved to LA, Toronto, and Texas. And ultimately, Texas is where I want to end up. They offer a lot of land and a lot of two-story houses. And growing up, I always lived in a ranch-style house. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I've always had the aspiration to have a two-story house myself. So after being down there, I think that's where I want to live. Toronto and LA, they're really expensive. And Texas has no state tax. So it's perfect 
for someone like me who is looking to buy a house and a lot of land because taxes, they hurt. They hurt bad. A lot of people may be wondering about my game day routine looks like, and honestly, there's only a couple rules. Rule number one, no splitting poles on game day, because honestly, that's just bad karma, and it's the biggest day of the week. Why would I do that? Rule number two, eat a healthy meal. But today is a cheat day and an off day, so we're gonna go grab a burger. If I wasn't playing COD, you would ask, what would I be doing? Well, for me, the answer is I'd be a sports therapist or a physical therapist. That being because I grew up playing a lot of sports. I played 10 years of baseball, five years of lacrosse. Uh, but there's one thing I wouldn't recommend if I was one of those, and that would to be to eat a cheeseburger. But like we said, it's an off day, so we're going in on it. So this is like my 11th year of playing competitive Call of Duty. And some of you may wonder, how long do you are you gonna play? Well, the answer for me is play as long as I can. Uh, right now, I feel like the sample size is as old as clay, like 30, 31, so I'm hoping uh, I got a good five, six more years in me to play competitive Call of Duty. And then after that, I'm just gonna go with the flow. Uh, you know, maybe work on creating a business outside of esports or becoming part of a business within esports. Uh, honestly, I love the esports industry and entertainment industry, so I can see myself doing something in the future after my competing career doing with esports, but you never know what's gonna happen. So uh, I'm just gonna go with the flow and play as long as I can and win as much as I can. That was Catching Up with Toronto Ultra presented by TD. If you guys wanna know anything else about me, let us know, and I hope you guys enjoyed some fun facts today.